Again, welcome to the 14th uh, EMS Academy graduation. My name is Matt Simpson. I'm the Assistant Fire Chief with the City of St. Paul Fire Department, and I am in charge of the EMS operations for the department. It's a, uh, it's a pleasure to have, to be able to say that this is the 14th class. We started this program in 2009, and it has been nothing but a, uh, again, a pleasure to work with and watch these young men and women become EMTs and hopefully uh, start a new path for a, a career in the fire and EMS uh, service. So thank you for all your support. And without further ado, we'll get started with some uh, recognitions. This academy does not happen without many, many partners, um, some of which the City of St. Paul. Behind me, I have uh, Deputy Mayor Coleman, uh, Beckman. Uh, Mayor Coleman is also very supportive of this program. Uh, Fire Chief Tim Butler. It was kind of a vision that has uh, that began in again in 09 and has really just taken off to uh, to be a spectacular program. We also have partners in the Human Rights and Equal Employment Opportunity Hero. Unfortunately, they could not be here tonight. Uh, the St. Paul Public Schools and the Hub Center, the Community Action uh, Partnership, and they do a lot of our um, social services that uh, that might be unknown to the students at the time uh, during the classes uh, that they can benefit from. And as well, we have a new partner this year in Century College. Uh, we have one representative from there. Unfortunately, uh, one of the other individuals was called away to deal with some, uh, some of the accidents, some of the news that, that you might have seen with the uh, firefighters from Michigan that were uh, injured and killed in the uh, unfortunate rollover on 35. Um, he is helping facilitate some organization with uh, planning and whatnot to, uh, to return those firefighters back to Michigan. So our uh, thoughts and prayers are with those folks as well. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Deputy Mayor uh, Beckman to say a few words about the Academy. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Mayor Coleman is sorry that he can't be here tonight. This is one of uh, his favorite things to do is to stand with the St. Paul Fire Department and thank them for their service and celebrate the accomplishments that they have, uh, particularly in growing talent here in the city of St. Paul. Uh, the EMS Academy has a special place in the Coleman administration's heart um, for many reasons. One is that it is it, it shows the best of us. It is the best of us as we collaborate across city departments. As uh, Chief Simpson said, we have uh, many departments between HERO and finance and the, and the fire department that all have to work together to pull off this academy. Um, the city council and the mayor's office work together to financially find the support for the program. And the EMS Academy shows the best of us in that it brings forward our brightest and most talented youth in the city of St. Paul and invests in them and says, we see a future for you, you see a future for yourself. Um, we wanna be a part of doing that together. And so it is tonight that at first, I just wanna say thank you to all of you who are in the crowd. I know when your family member takes on a new project like this or says they wanna go back to school or get a certification or that that puts a strain on all family members, that you know, they're scheduling and budgeting and time away from family. And so I just wanna thank you all for supporting um, the young people in your lives who are, have taken on this challenge to better themselves and set a career path for them and their family. It's always so great to see, I see this little girl in the very front row who's got a great big bouquet of flowers. Yes, you, you are adorable. She's like, oh God. <laughs> but it's just, it's you know, you warmed my heart as you came in because it is that support for the folks up here because they studied long hours, they worked hard, um, they pushed themselves and they needed you behind them as they did that. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> yes, we'll give a little round of applause, a little shout out to the family members. And I'm particularly grateful to all of the folks who are in the EMS Academy graduates' lives um, as they have studied and they have learned, our trainers, our leaders here in the fire department, in our higher education um, organizations who are part of this, in you know the healthcare facilities who have helped make this possible. Uh, I know, I'm a St. Paul resident, I love my city where I live, and I feel great confidence that God forbid I have to call 911 and look for uh, EMS services, that the young women and men who are here today and those that they follow might come to my door and help me or my husband or my kids 
And I have confidence in that because I know the people who have trained them. I know their integrity, uh, the depth of their caring, um, and the prioritization of just other people in front of themselves. So thank you very much to all of you who are leaders in this EMS Academy and who invested your time and energy in these young adults who are entering into this career and profession. And to you, the cadets, I just want to thank you for stepping forward. Um, you have uh, opted into a service, not just a career, but a service. You've decided that you want to spend you know, your time away from family, your time away from doing things that are fun, by rushing at people who need help. And there are some people who, you know, if somebody rushes at you, that you can step back, but you are people who are willing to step forward. And I appreciate that very much. And um, it's not, you know, you will see things and experience things that might not always be easy, but at the core of it will always be service. And I am grateful for anyone who is willing to step forward and put that service, but particularly those of you in the healthcare field. Um, it is, a, we are in an interesting time in our city and uh, more now than ever, uh, the mayor and I have prioritized making sure that the city employees who serve the residents of the city also reflect the diversity of our city. And I, it, I feel good about knowing that when a refugee family calls you know, 911 and we send out our EMS services, they get the very best care from our St. Paul Fire Department as possible. And this EMS Academy and you know what we're doing with the Fire Medic Cadet and how we are working with our fire department uh, goes a long way to further that. So thank you very much for being here today and joining us in this celebration. It is always a great day when we graduate more uh, Academy Cadets into the profession. Um, thank you for the time and energy you put in, and I wish you the best of luck as you go out there to serve uh, St. Paul residents and everybody who comes to visit this and those that are in need. Godspeed. Thank you. As well behind me, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, behind me as well is uh, Chief Tim Butler, Chief Jerome Hamilton, Tony Spector, who's the executive director of the Emergency Medical Services Regulatory Board, who kind of regulate, I don't say who kind of, they do regulate the EMS functions in the state of Minnesota. I have uh, Captain Ken Adams uh, with the St. Paul Fire Department, Linda Gorsh from Century College, and last but not least, Assistant Chief uh, Butch Inks. So thanks to them for also attending. Uh, next up in order would be to have uh, Tony Spector come up and say a few words uh, on the Academy's behalf. Thank you, Chief. Good evening, or with the sun still out, good afternoon. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity and the honor to speak today at this very special event, an event that acknowledges the outstanding dedication and commitment of the men and women on stage here, the graduates of St. Paul's EMS Academy. So that is a really big deal. There are 10 of you who graduated, eight of you who are here today, but 10 of you who graduated Emergency medical technicians, EMTs. It is a craft, it is a profession, it is a career, and it can be a door opener. An EMT, how you do can make you, perhaps elevate you or make you ascend to the next level, which may be a paramedic. Perhaps you wish to be a police officer. Perhaps you wish to explore this as maybe the entree into being a nurse, even a physician. Perhaps you want to move this into another level and be an emergency te medical technician in an emergency room. They have those. And over the weekend, my six and a half year old and my four and a half year old were playing and as luck would have it, my four and a half year old dislocated her elbow. So when we arrived at the emergency department, who was the first person that greeted my family? It was an emergency medical technician, an EMT. First person who had hands on with my daughter. An exciting chapter awaits and your star is rising. Now, dedication and commitment oftentimes comes with sacrifice. Life is about choices and opportunity costs. And for the graduates, and more importantly, their families, stuff had to get missed. And to those families who are here today, thank you for supporting your family members, these EMTs, and thank you for your sacrifice. 
As Chief Simpson said, my name is Tony Spector, and I'm the Executive Director of the Minnesota Emergency Medical Services Regulatory Board, also known as the EMSRB. And I used to tell people that I was the person who signed your certificate to practice. It was my signature on it, but we've long ago we went to digital uh, certificates, so my signature just isn't there, but that's okay. Now, the mission of the EMSRB is to protect the public's health and safety through regulation and support of the EMS system. And the EMS system, as you probably know, there are beautiful ambulances and really shiny fire trucks. And uh, I don't know if you've ever visited an apparatus bay of a volunteer fire service, but it's eerily quiet and less than until the folks arrive. So that's really a system, our EMS system is a system that cannot exist without the EMS personnel, dedicated professionals just like you. Without the personnel, the equipment and the technology are meaningless. Now as an EMS professional, as an EMT, you are called to care when the situation places a patient in the most vulnerable of conditions and in some of the most private of circumstances. You are entrusted with so much and you can do so much, and you can make quite a difference. Question to the uh, new EMTs here. Who here has had to wear a hospital gown before? Okay. How much fun was wearing that hospital gown? Would it be fair to say it could have been a little embarrassing? Okay, not fun. Okay, take that with you though. Remember that when you go in the street. Remember when you're on a patient transport. Remember the embarrassment that you felt, and then you had to deal with a perfect stranger while you're dressed in that gown. Remember that when you have to deal with that patient, you'll be able to empathize with that patient. Remember, that patient is not, you're seeing that patient in probably the worst of times, and they're gonna be guarded, and they're gonna be embarrassed. But through your professionalism, your dedication, your demeanor, you'll be able to disarm that and make that patient feel safe and cared for. So please remember that. I was told that someone dials 911 for an EMS response about once every 10 years. So it would be fair to say you probably don't get a second chance to make that first impression. So remember that. You have the opportunity to do so much. Who here has had a bad day? Which one of you have had a bad day? Lord knows I have. But we can't let our bad day get the best of us because your bad day pales in comparison to your patient's bad day. Let me tell you a funny story. October 22nd, 2015, I was driving back to my office from southern Minnesota, and I had the fortune of meeting an unlicensed driver who was kind enough to run a red light and smash into my car on the driver's side door. There was an independent witness who said, hey, I saw everything, and you, pointing to me, did nothing wrong, and you, pointing to the other driver, ran that red light. And I'm thinking, oh, this is good. And the, the uh, ambulance arrived on scene and the EMS personnel were saying, we need to get you into the ambulance. And the, I said, I just need to get her information. She's the only independent witness and I really, really need to do that. And the, the uh, EMS professional said to me, well, I guess if that's more important than your health, and he walked away from me. I share that with you because I later found out that this uh, EMS personnel person was having a bad day. I would be fair to say his bad day paled in comparison to my bad day. It's easy to let that get ahead of us. But I, I, I share this with you for a reason. Try to keep it in check. Just remember, every time you have that bad day, it's gonna pale in comparison to the bad day of your patient. I wanna talk a little bit more about bad days. What is the first rule, or more accurate, what is the very first question of EMS incident response? I can, you want a hint? Is the scene safe? Does that sound familiar? Please say, please say yes. Please say yes. Century College will really want you to hear that you say yes. St. Paul Fire really wants you here to say yes. Is the scene safe? Well, I'm gonna expand that a little bit for you and ask you, is our scene safe? Are we taking care of ourselves? Are we taking care of each other? Now. We have an obligation if we see something. We have an obligation to say something to our colleagues if we see something that concerns us. Now sometimes that concern may relate to someone's physical health. Are they taking care of themselves? Are they eating properly? Are they getting enough sleep? Are they getting enough exercise? Other times that concern relates to someone's mental health. Are they taking care of themselves? Do they possess the coping skills to recognize an issue and to work to resolve the issue? Or more, even, more importantly, do they even see that there is an issue? So I say to these new graduates, 
as you take care of yourselves and you take care of each other, if you see something, say something. And commit to this. If you are on the receiving end of somebody saying something, please listen to your colleague. If a colleague comes to you with a concern, you're obligated to listen. Okay? You need to do that because that's how we take care of each other. Now, when you see something, say something. It's kind of a cutesy phrase, isn't it? It's, it's kind of neat to say. It's a one-liner. I mean, it's easy to talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? Now, as I said to you, back in October, I was involved in a car crash. And at the time, I didn't know how serious the car crash was. It was a pretty serious car crash, actually. One of my diagnoses, if you will, is a traumatic brain injury. And I didn't know much about traumatic brain injuries, but I've learned a lot about them. I've learned that during the initial stages of a traumatic brain injury, um, patients can experience some form of what they call traumatic brain injury depression or TBI depression. And I was asked, are you experiencing TBI depression? And I said, of course, no, because I didn't think I was. Well, everyone around me saw that I was. And one day during my convalescence at home, I was off for a few months from work, I received an invitation from a buddy of mine to meet him for a cup of coffee. And it was within my one mile travel distance and I could drive there. So I met him there, got to the coffee shop. First thing he said to me is, you need to see somebody. I said, is, is, why? And he told me why. I said, is it that bad? He says, yeah, it looks that bad. And then I remember, this is an, interve I, this is an intervention, and I remember, he is seeing something, he is saying something, I have an obligation to listen. So I did. And I reached out to the professionals, and life is fine now. So why do I share this with you? Because if you see something, say something, you have an obligation to listen. I listened, I sought the help, and things continue to improve. So things can happen. Life happens. And if you're sitting there as a 20-something, you're thinking, hey, it's all rainbows and unicorns, as my little daughter would say. But just remember, there are going to be some times when maybe if the pressure gets a little too great or you see it with one of your friends, help them out. And please know that there are resources available. At the state of Minnesota, we have what's called the Health Professional Services Program, HPSP. It's free. Guess what? You're a credentialed EMT, you're covered whether it be substance abuse, if it's a mental health issue, it's a confidential program. You go and my state agency pays. There are critical incident teams that are available for you. There are employee assistance programs, your peers, your friends, your colleagues. They're here to help. So I don't want to bring this on a downer. I don't end on a downer. I want to bring it back to a celebration. Like as my daughters would say again, rainbows and unicorns. You folks did it. I am really, really impressed. You are about to embark on a career, um, a profession, you are gonna make a difference in people's lives, and more importantly, you're gonna make a difference in your life. And so that's really impressive. So on behalf of the staff and the board members of the Emergency Medical Services Regulatory Board, I wanna thank you for your dedication, your commitment, your sacrifice, and your accomplishment. Well done. Thank you, Tony. If I could now, please have Ken Adams and Linda up to the podium. Good evening. My name is Ken Adams. I was uh, one of their instructors this semester, and uh, I'd like to say a couple things to the to the graduates. Uh, First of all, you made it, thank you. You stuck with me, you didn't give up on me, you didn't run from me, a few of you hid from me, but I could always find you, okay? When we started this out, we told you there would be a lot of studying, okay? And do you now believe me? It's not over yet. Every day that you're an EMT, there's an opportunity to learn and to study and learn because every time we learn something, we help one of the patients who we go to. So I challenge you guys to keep studying. Read the articles. Read the articles in the publications from GEMS, from wherever, but read the EMS articles and make yourself better. Don't stop. Don't quit. EMT is a great job, and it is a life-changing job, okay? And by becoming an EMT, you now have a larger family than you did before. Some of you said you had a big family to invite to this graduation tonight. You now have a much larger family. John couldn't be here tonight because he's helping our family from Michigan who we'd never met before. 
Okay? You have a much larger family. Welcome to the family. So on the first day of class, did you think you'd make it to this stage? <laughs> we thought you could, and I'm very pleased to see all of you here. I'm Linda Gorish. I'm representing Century College, and we are so thrilled that uh, we have been included in the partnership with St. Paul and St. Paul Fire and all of their uh, additional support that is a part of this program. And we look forward to continuing in, in moving forward and hopefully class 15. Um, as new graduates of this EMT program, you join people that have started here and haven't stopped here. You may stay at an EMT level, but I would strongly recommend that you continue your education. Some of you already are, and you're already starting courses in other uh, programs and going toward uh, degrees and education that's going to bring you more uh, support for your life. I am so glad to see all of you here, and I'm glad you stuck it out and even though tonight I don't have any forms for you to fill out, I hope you s just enjoy the moment and know that you made it to that end point. Congratulations. So as with every graduation, there comes a, uh, a very unique opportunity for the, uh, the members of the class to select two individuals to speak on their behalf of their experience and what they feel they've learned out of the, uh, the, the opportunities the course has, has offered. So without further ado, I'd like to offer up uh, the class speakers for this academy, Oscar Marfori and Imani Van Jackson. Please come on up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 10 weeks ago, a group of individuals started out on a journey that would change their lives forever, each from different walks of life and with individual goals in mind. They did not realize in such a short amount of time that will, they will be equipped with a valuable skill set that will potentially change the lives of the communities they serve. Through various examinations, simulations, ride-alongs, and lectures, they would shape themselves into the individuals you see before you tonight. Throughout the whole semester, we made sacrifices that tested us mentally, emotionally, and physically. The bond that was formed from these struggles and successes created a second family that stopped at nothing to make sure everybody stood united after each day. The countless hours spent by each individual cannot be summed up by a pass-fail or a single grade, but by how they confidently choose to apply these skills. Our instructors gave us hypothetical scenarios that called upon material we studied and read and we were expected to problem solve to the best of our abilities. We soon found out that the many solutions that we have will have the best outcomes possible for the people we serve. During discussion, our instructors would reference their career experiences that pertain to the material we were covering in lecture, which made the, uh, the experience that much more fulfilling. Looking back on this past summer, a lot of obstacles were put in front of each individual you see on this stage. Thoughts of quitting the program and frustration definitely crossed our minds multiple times. But even then, there was somebody around the corner to keep you back on track and make sure that you weren't left behind. This summer is definitely one that each of us will remember and we wouldn't have it any other way. And we remember the memories that we had with each other. To the EMS Academy, summer 2016. We have been through a lot together, you guys, and we have become better people because of it. We learned acronyms like SAMPLE to get a clearer picture on how we would treat our patients and how we can help their lives. I'll leave you with one more, and it's fear. 
It stands for everything that we face, we will rise and be better people. If you think of fear in this way, you'll become a better EMT and a better person all around. Again, congratulations, you guys. We did it. Congratulations. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here tonight. This occasion we have gathered for is not only quite celebratory, but exquisitely humbling to be a part of. As I look back on the past 10 weeks, they seem somewhat of a blur. To have absorbed such a plethora of things in such short time seems unfathomable. Each class we attended was flooded with such information, such emotion, that it has not yet dawned on me that it is coming to an end. Waking up on those days and arriving at the station newly ignited a burning excitement in me each time I stepped through those doors. Though I admit it was not always sunshine and daisies. Many nights, the reams of homework were daunting. Chapter readings exponentially growing, frequent tests looming, and before long, we truly wondered what on earth we had gotten ourselves into. As the weeks passed by, sleep was forfeited, a necessary sacrifice to obtain our goals. Each morning I arrived at Station 51, and I gazed with aspiration at the young men and women in their uniforms, alumni of Academy's past. And I knew once more why I had ventured this strenuous journey. Their success incited my passion. My propensity to do more in life was newly reignited. To join their side, to be a part of not only a team, but a family a family responsible for the lives and care of others, entrusted multitudes, oh, entrusted by multitudes, pardon me, <laughs> to aid people in their time of need. Though unbeknownst to some, the extent of their services ever changed the lives of each and every one of us. This is something we wanted to be a part of, something that this course has allotted each of us a chance to appertain. Each of us had innumerable outside responsibilities and such unique motivating factors yet we were still able to meet on common ground because we all know that this is where we wanted to be, standing on this stage here tonight. So we helped one another overcome obstacles, hurdles. With bounds, though not effortless, we vanquished our doubts and made it here this evening. I sincerely thank each and every individual who allowed us to be on this stage, to be a part of something so much greater than ourselves. I would like to express my deepest gratitude to our sponsors, our phenomenal instructors, families, loved ones, those with unwavering faith in each and every one of us to have given us such an extraordinary opportunity. Opening countless doors and equipping us with skills we could have only dreamed of, we thank you. With that, I would like to end this with a quote I found most fitting of our journey. We have to confront ourselves. Do we like what we see in the mirror? And according to our light, according to our understanding, according to our courage, we will have to say yay or nay and rise. From the late activist and profound poet, Ms. Maya Angelou, and tonight on this night, we have risen. We who have prevailed after 10 demanding weeks have emerged and transformed. So to my classmates, my friends, now my family, the EMS Academy Summer Class of 2016, rise, for this day is ours. I love you all, and congratulations. Yes. And I think now everybody understands why that is probably my most favorite part of the whole uh, ceremony. They did a great job. Let's give them another round of applause. So at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Chief Butler and Chief Hamilton to uh, take their positions. We're going to hand out their certificates. And I'm also going to call back up Captain Adams and Linda to hand out the, uh, or read off the names, please. Okay. Oh, oh, just one. Yeah, just okay. one. Mohammed Aiden.
We have Ali Ahmed, but he is not with us this evening. He is actually attending classes because he is not stopping. <laughs> Jordan Babu. Badhasa Hussein. <laughs> Chao Li. Okay, guys. Oscar Marfori, Jr. Darcy Roberts. Yes. Imani Van Jackson. Yeah. Mitchell Will, he is already moved to Oregon to become an EMT. Emmanuel Yang. Class, you can be seated. So there, there comes a time in this uh, ceremony as well for an oath of an emergency medical technician. It's, a, it's a quite a, a lengthy mouthful, um, and some of the words have uh, definitely met their match as far as what historically they probably have meant and what they mean today. But uh, Chief Butler has done a very nice job of administering that oath, and so I'm going to invite him up to uh, administer the EMT oath for the, the class. So class, if you'd please stand again, and I'm going to invite Chief Butler up. Class of 2016, as Chief Simpson said, the oath of office is a rather historic oath uh, developed in the EMS world for EMTs. It is a promise that you are making to the people that you're serving. More importantly, it's a promise you're making to yourself in how you're gonna act when no one else is around or watching, how you're gonna behave when you're in the limelight and when you're back at the station or maybe in the front seat of the rig. So if I'd ask you to please raise your right hand and repeat the oath after me. Be it pledged as an emergency medical technician, I will honor all physical and judicial laws. I will follow that regimen, which according to my ability and judgment, I consider for the benefit of all patients. I shall, abstain from I shall abstain from whatever is damaging and mischievous. Whatever is damaging and mischievous. Nor shall I suggest any such counsel. Nor shall I suggest any such counsel. 
into whatever homes I enter, I will go into them for the benefit of only the sick and injured, never revealing what I see or hear in the lives of men and women unless required by law. I shall also share my medical knowledge with those who may benefit from what I have learned. I will ser serve unselfishly and continuously in order to help make a better world for all. While I continue to keep this oath honored, May it be granted to me to enjoy life and the practice of the art respected by all humanity. Should I trespass or violate this oath, may the reverse be my fate. Well done. Class of 2016, congratulations. So that concludes our ceremony again for the 14th Academy. This has been our honor to watch these young men and women reach a goal that they only vision as a dream when they begin. Again, you always have to start at the bottom of the mountain and work your way to the top. But then once you get there, you look down and say, that wasn't too bad, right guys? Not too bad. So congratulations. Enjoy with your family. We'll have uh, photo opportunities up here at the end. But thank you for your attendance. Thank you for your support. And uh, we wish you all the best of luck. You're welcome.